everybody, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be doing a painting of a sunflower. I have one here that I didn't like how it turned out, so I'm gonna start over. But this is the basic flower, and uh, we'll be going from there, but I'm going to be painting it differently. So um, I will put the reference photo over on my Facebook group. I do have a Facebook group now. If you'd like to go over to Facebook and you can find me at Sharon Cullen Art Tutorials. And that's where I will be posting the reference photos for my paintings so that you can follow along with me. The, uh, the uh, photo will be over there for you. All the photos I use are either taken by me, obviously not this one. Um, I suppose I could have gone back to an old photo, but this was taking, taken from uh, a free website. I'm not sure if it was Unsplash or one of the other ones. But anyway, it is okay to use that photo. A couple things about the group. If you'd like to post your photos of your paintings, that would be really awesome. You can share them with the group so that we can see how yours is coming along. Don't be afraid to post. If you'd like a critique, then just say, state that you, you need help with this or that, or you don't know what went wrong, or you know something like that, and then people can give you some tips and tricks, and I will try to do that as well. But if you do not want a critique, do not ask for one, and we will not give you a critique. Critiques need to be done very delicately because people's feelings can be hurt very easily, and I don't want any budding artist being discouraged by somebody who's more experienced than them. That happened to me a couple times. Uh, once when I had my YouTube channel, a very well-known artist who has a drawing book out was very cruel to me in my comments section and told me that my art sucked basically and um, it was very hurtful. It And it made me angry that an artist who is as accomplished as he is would say something so cruel to some up-and-coming artist. Everybody's at different levels. Everybody does different styles. So I want you to be encouraged to go ahead and post your photos of your work to us and we can share with each other. I, it would be nice if we kept the mediums the same as as I am instructing, uh, that would be, that would probably be helpful. You know, like uh, I've done urban sketching, I've done mixed media, I've done watercolor and gouache. Those are my primary, primary focus on my videos. But I have older videos of pastel, which I want to get back into. I love pastel painting and uh, some oil work. So, and who knows, maybe I'll get into acrylic again someday. But Anyway, if we could keep them to to the, the normal medium or even, you know, drawing and mixed media, uh, like if you're doing watercolor and add colored pencil on top or markers with colored pencil or something like that, that's fine. So I just like to keep it to painting, drawing and painting. So uh, yeah, so post your photos there. I would love to see them. I hope everybody will go over and join the group again. It is Sharon Cullen Art Tutorials, and that's where you will find me. Now, I'm going to probably put up my old Facebook page again. I plan on trying to put that back up again eventually, and that will just be Sharon Cullen Art. So I don't want you to be confused, and you wouldn't be able to post photos there. It wouldn't, it wouldn't allow you to do that. They're different kinds of pages. So... Anyway, pick the one that says tutorials at the end, and we're going to go ahead and get started with the sunflower painting. I'm really excited to get going on it. Now, this tutorial is going to take longer, so I will be doing some fast forward movement after I've taught you what you need to know, uh, because there's a lot of intricate detail in the center of the sunflower that really will help to add texture and um, movement to the to the flower. So it won't be hyper realistic, but anyway, I'd like to give it the, to lose the flatness that you would get if you just had a circle on a piece of paper, you know what I mean? So it's going to take longer and there are many layers. There's a lot of um, 
washes and glazing that goes on top of those washes. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be using several colors today. Use what you have. My colors are Daniel Smith. That's the majority of what I use. And I use a large palette. So these cups have come from my the wells of my palette. Um, but I'm be going to be using sap green, olive green, permanent yellow light. Actually, this one is uh, Shinhan Professional Watercolor. Um, then this one is Aussie Red Gold and Quinacridone Gold. So I have three different yellows that I'll be using. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then for the uh, center of the flower, I will be using, um, I probably won't, yeah, I'll be using Neutral Tint, Burnt Sienna, and Burnt Umber. I may use a little quinacridone gold in there also. So those are the colors I will be using. I'm just gonna set them over to the side. I have my uh, palette here. Try to keep it where you can see it. <coughs> Although my lens is not a wide angle, so it makes it a little more difficult for me to get those kinds of uh, photos for you. You know, and I always keep a little piece of watercolor paper here if I want to test a color before I use it. So I will just tuck that under here. And um, my water, I use two water jars. I use uh, one for clear water and the other one for rinsing my brushes. And I keep a microfiber cloth there to just dab my brush on as well as a paper towel. I keep that in case I need to dab anything up on my paper. This paper I'm using today is a paper I'm not familiar with. So we'll see how it goes. This is a Arches 100% cotton paper, but it's called satin. It is so smooth, there's like no tooth to it. So we're going to see how the colors blend with that. I'm not really sure how, how that's going to work. And there's the photo, the same one that I've posted over on the Facebook page. And um, I'll go ahead from there so that I can use that for my reference. Uh, I'm looking at the center of the flower. You can see that there's the deep dark spot in the center. It's usually where the seeds will form and then it pushes out as the as the flower matures, although not all sunflowers do that. They don't produce sunflower seeds like that. Um, but then the uh, area around it is much lighter and then it gets a little bit darker and then you'll see that there's like very dark brown, almost black speckles in it. So we're gonna be doing that in layers. What I wanna do first is just take a little burnt sienna I'm just going to uh, wet my paper down with a large brush. I have a number eight. It's not really large, but make sure it's clean because um, sometimes they're not clean enough. And I'm just gonna wet this whole area. I don't know how wet into wet is going to work with this paper. It's very strange. I feel like I'm working with mixed media paper, although the weight of the paper is much stronger than mixed media paper, so. Okay, now I'm going in with a smaller brush, number four. I'm using my Da Vinci Maestro Sable brushes. Gonna mix up some, nope, that's burnt umber. I don't want that. I'm glad I didn't put that right on the page. I want burnt sienna. and a little bit of quinacridone gold. So I just get that ready on my paper here, or on my palette here. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to these. And I'll start out with the quinacridone gold that's on my brush, and I'm just gonna go around the center of that circle. I guess it does spread out. You can see it um, feathering. If I 
I zoom in closer. Now I'm going to take the burnt sienna and just go around the entire area outside of that. And let those mix together. This is just a light layer. You can see the granulation in this paper <laughs> from the burnt sienna. My burnt sienna is granulating. Not all burnt siennas are, I don't believe. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Somebody can correct me down below. Um, but Daniel Smith's burnt sienna granulates. And it's very pretty to see this granulation. Um, Okay, now I'm going to go in with, I am going to go in with some neutral tint mixed in with that burnt umber just to get them to the color that I need. And I need to water that down too. It's a lot of paint for one. I don't want that to splash onto my paper. It looks like it just did. Okay, I'll wipe my brush off and we'll just go in with that. And I don't want it super dark. We're just doing our first layer because we'll be using a, a fine brush to dot uh, the paper. Now I'm wondering, maybe it's the paper that does this. This is a piece of paper that I received. Do you guys remember when I used to do Doodle and Sketch? Uh, those boxes from Russia. Oh, God bless all those innocent people. Um, they uh, would send me papers every every time every month, and there'd be a packet of different styles of papers from different companies. They used arches a lot, which I really loved. Now I'm going to go to the green area here, the stem, and I'm just going to go around that one petal. I've got a tremor today, and I apologize. Sometimes I have a tremor, and sometimes I don't. Gosh darn. Let me clean my brush a little bit more here. There we go. I've been waiting on those Rosemary and Company brushes to come. It says they arrived in Chicago on March 6th. I am five hours from Chicago, you guys. Oh, no, not anymore. I'm probably seven hours from Chicago now. But March 6th, and today is March 16th. So 10 days and it's still stuck there. I hope they did not lose my package. I will be really bummed. <coughs> now my stem does not reach to the bottom of my paper. You can extend yours or you can um, go ahead and just let it kind of trail off. Now the last time I used this green that is really pretty. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use it again. It's chromium oxide green. But I will warn you, if you have this color, it is semi-transparent. So be very careful laying it down um, because it really goes on thick. So let me just get some on my palette here. Let's see how we do. <clears throat> and I'm going to go on down the left side. This is really hard for me to keep that palette there because of my left hand. I'm moving my whole arm. If you have trouble being steady, just take your whole arm and move it, not just your hand. And that helps. I just kind of dry brushed it off the edge there. Now I'm going to take my wet brush and go down the other side so that this can blend in a little bit. <clears throat> There's a lot of light coming in from the white light right <laughs> on this photo. I'm going to go back in again on the left side, a little bit darker. Why did my phone alarm? I hope my camera is on. I will be bummed if my camera is not on for this. That would really suck. No, oh, no, it's on. Good. <laughs> All righty. Now, if you look on the stem, there are some little nubbies. 
I'm going to take a little bit of sap green and mix it in with that chromium oxide so they blend together. Just kind of deepens it. And I'm going in this little notch here, I'm going to paint this area and then go around like that. Then there's a notch a little ways up, a little over halfway. It doesn't really matter where, but it looks almost like a U. If you look at that, it looks like a U. And then there's a couple kind of streaks coming down from that. So I'm just going to let that happen. Now it's wet, so it's blending together. We should wait until it dries a little more, and we will go back in again. I'm just going to kind of wipe this off. I'll change my mind, and this doesn't really matter. We can just kind of blend it in there. Okay, so now we wait for the brown to dry, and we can go ahead in with the yellow. Actually, we can do some of these flowers, and if they do blend into the center, it's okay. So I'm just going to take some of my permanent yellow light as my first layer and if you get it a little bit too bright, don't worry about that because at the end, we're going to glaze over it again with this color. Now, I did not wet this second one. I don't think we need to go wet into wet. I can just dry or go wet on to dry on this paper and it'll be fine. This color stains, so it's hard to lift. So just so you're aware. Okay, now that I've got the first glaze down with the light yellow, I'm going back in with my Aussie Red Gold and the lines that you see on the sunflower, you can just kind of draw those in as you go. I kind of wish I would have stopped before putting that final glaze on because I felt like it got a little bit too dark for me. It needed to be a little bit deeper, that, that light yellow, but I went a little too deep. And the key with watercolor is to start easy and you can always keep glazing. So take my advice <laughs> and don't do what I do at the end. I mean, it turned out good, but I would have preferred it if I were to do it again. I would do it a little differently. So go ahead and take that Aussie Red Gold or your Quinacridone Gold or whatever deeper yellow you have to put in the shadowing and the little valleys of the flower petals in. I also um, go in on the ones that are falling underneath a petal that's above it. I'm putting that in as shadow. You'll see me dipping my brush tip on the paper towel. I'm just taking off some of the saturation um, in the brush so that I'm not putting so much color down. There are areas that I want to dry brush, so like right there. So um, that's why I'm doing that. Now I'm back to the center of the flower. I'm just putting some of the little stems or stamens, I don't know what those things are called, I should have looked it up, in the center where that quinacridone gold is. And then I will be adding a little more deeper texture to the outer area before we go in and dot everything in. 
I'm starting with a number three brush here and then I'll switch over to a number two later but this is just kind of underneath texture so I'm not worried about what it's really looking like it kind of blends together now I'm going to go back into the center of the flower with another glaze of the brown over that this uh, has a little bit of neutral tint in it but not a lot and I'm leaving one area a little bit lighter just to where the light shines on it and then I'm adding texture with more of the burnt sienna dry brushing it into the background and these layers will not be showing at the end you may see through a little bit but this is just to add texture to the center of the flower Now back to the stem, I'm going to go ahead and add the shadowing on and a little darkness over to the left side of the stem, just dry brushing that on. And then I'm going in and adding those notches that I was talking about earlier. And again, I'm going to wet the right hand side with water just so the color kind of blends in. And that right side is going to remain almost white. If you look at the photo, it's such a close up. You can see every fine hair on the stem, and they're just sort of sparkling in the light. Obviously, I'm not going to add all those little, little um, hairs, but keeping that light on the right hand side really shows how much light was shining on the stem. And now basically putting these notches in is adding the shadows where the light wasn't hitting it. And it brings them to life. Now rather than using my olive green, I'm just taking a little bit of my burnt umber and adding that to the green that was in my stem, that chromium oxide green. And I'm using that to paint in the shadows. And I'm just studying the picture here to make sure I'm putting these in the right place. So take the time to look at your photo and to really study what is going on in that stem and just draw what you see. Don't worry about how you're going to make it look uh, like a stem rounded or whatever. If you just draw what you see, it will all come together in the end. If you see a little smile or a U shape in that one that I just painted, then paint that in and just keep doing that and they will all come together. going to paint in all the little leaves that are poking out from behind the flower. They're not the big large leaves that you see on the plant, just those little, I don't know what you'd call them, they're little pointy leaves that come off of the base of the flower there. Just look at your photo reference and look at it closely and you'll see where all of those little leaves start poking out. Many of them surprised me. I didn't have them drawn in and then I saw them in the photo so I added them. And now I'm going ahead and I'm going to glaze over all of the flower petals with my lightest yellow one more time. I glaze over everything. I glaze right over the top of all the Aussie red gold. It won't move, so you can go ahead and paint right on top of it.
And now I'm going back in with some Aussie red gold to deepen some of the shadows that are on those flower petals that are underneath. Now it's hard to see because my hand gets in the way, but I'm just tapping small dots all over the inner portion of the flower. And I start out with them kind of light um, and that like a medium value. And then I go in with darker and darker and eventually in the center, it will be totally um, neutral tint, which is, would be very close to black. If you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be continuing doing these tutorials. Um, I'll also be doing some of my own artwork demos, but I'll be doing tutorials as well. And um, also join my Facebook group over on Facebook, Sharon Cullen Art Tutorials, where you can find all the photo references and post your work and share it with the group. So I decided to take the tape off of my paper after I'm done here and realize in the bottom right corner there are yellow speckles. So I decided to add some water to my yellow and take a brush and start speckling my paper all over so that it looked like it was a planned mistake. If that happens to you, just add speckles. But don't overdo it. You don't want to overdo it. Just a reminder, you can find all the reference photos for my tutorials over on the Facebook group, Sharon Cullen Art Tutorials. So come on over and join us there and post your artwork. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're not, try subscribing to the channel, see if you like it. I do tutorials and I also do demonstrations of my own artwork. Um, I'm planning on doing plein air painting as the weather improves. Um, I will be out and about this year doing that. Last year I could hardly walk, but now that I've had my surgery I'm doing much better and I think I'll be able to do that and do some urban sketching or rural sketching, whatever the case may be. But um, I'll get out there and do some of that for you as well. In the meantime, remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you all, you guys, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.